Who did not deserve to get canceled? What is your NSFW confession? What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? I used to hitchhike all over the place. Once I got in the car with a guy who would not let me out of his car, had to jump out of his car when it was going about 40 miles an hour down the highway. I never hitchhiked again. Being trapped between a rock and a canoe in a rapid and expecting to drown and assuming my paddling partner was already dead. We both lived, I was badly injured. Falling out of a tree four to five meters above the ground. Spent the night in a tent on a high school camp with a sprained ankle, which turned out to be broken after x-rays the next day. I told the teachers at camp that it was broken. They wouldn't believe me because I wasn't crying. It was an extremely rough night in that no sleep for the first time in my life. It was super grumpy at said teachers when they woke up. I went for a walk with my dog around 10.30 p.m. one night. As soon as we walked out the door, he becomes agitated. I figured he just needed to go. As we walk down the driveway, I hear rustling and see a large dark shape in the neighbor's yard a few feet away. We dashed to the street because a bear had climbed down and was now between us and the door. It walked away without incident, and my dog still needed a poop. Well, I hope your dog took the poop that it deserved. Woke up to find an intruder standing by my bed looking down at me. Ooh, I need to stop doing these recordings and late at night. Oh my god. <laughs> Mine is kind of stupid, but it was literally the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. I was on one of those giant slides at the fairground with my three-year-old and we were riding down with her sitting between my legs. We must have been leaning forward or not sitting correctly or something because we ended up airborne near the bottom of the slide and I was gonna land on her. So I had to like flip us over while we were in the air and I ended up losing a bunch of skin when we landed and she was 100% fine. It was so scary though because I knew that if I landed on her, it was going to really hurt her and I didn't know if I could get us flipped over. My husband said that it was wild to see. Either getting hit by a pontoon boat on a jet ski head on or crashing my motorcycle. A guy tried to break into my house while I was home alone. I was seven or eight when it happened. As a child, a big brindle dog decided to throw me to the ground and bite my head. I know worse things happen to other people, but I have, over 60 years later, a crystal memory of being on my back, holding his slavering teeth away from my face. Non-British people, what's something that confuses you about the UK? Italian here, recently moved to the UK, bada bing. I've yet to get used to the whole, are you all right, being used as a hello. In Italy, when we ask each other that, it's taken in the same vein as, how are you? So we expect the other person to answer it and then ask us if we're all right too. But here, it seems to be just used as a rhetorical question and you're not supposed to say it back. It's actually all right, no L's. British have taken enough L's throughout the year. I still haven't understood whether they use metric or imperial. Seems like a weird mix of both. Why does the UK split into the home countries for football or soccer and rugby and any sports that I'm forgetting, but competes as the UK in the Olympics? They need to stuff tightly folded crisp packets into whatever hole you can find. How they are able to make so many amazing shows. Beans for breakfast? How some of you can stay in the cold wearing light clothing. Their government. How nobody caught that despicable shirt bag Jimmy Savile before he died. Not confused, just like it when you say oi to get people's attention. Oi, 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 mate. Which movie scene is really hard to sit through and watch? Train spotting. Specifically the scene where they wake up from their drug-induced haze to find a dead baby. The decomposition effect made to look like they neglected to check on her for days, then their best and only response is to shoot up and get high again. Dull the pain, just tragic. Swingers, Mike calling and leaving messages over and over for the girl whose phone number he got at the bar. Annihilation, the bear quietly screaming, help me. Absolutely not, thank you. Green Mile, I leave when Mr. Jingles chases the thread bobbin and again for the execution scene gone wrong. I've seen both scenes once and don't need to see that again. Hereditary, watching the kid just pull up to the bed is pretty tough to watch. The scream by the mom the next morning is also pretty tough. The shower scene in Schindler's List. Took me years to get through it, even though it ends up just being a shower and not a gas chamber. Also, the Tony episode on the new Dahmer series. I was hysterical watching it and feel sick thinking about how much real people suffered because of him. When Will Smith has to smother the dog as it turns in I Am Legend. Saving Private Ryan when the German soldier is plunging the knife into Mellish. The entirety of Requiem for a Dream. Teeth on the Curb in American History X. The scene in Spongebob. <laughs> The scene in the Spongebob movie where Spongebob and Patrick dry up. <laughs> one of these is not like the other, bro. <laughs> That caught me so off guard. Oh my God. You are elected president of Earth. What is your first executive order? The chill the frick out clause. Mandatory childhood development classes for parents. Form a team who investigates why I became president of Earth. 24 hour Chinese restaurants. Free insulin for whoever needs it. My sister and one of my favorite YouTubers are both type one diabetic. So uh, I think we should give free insulin to everybody. Everybody who needs it. I would ask to choose someone else. It would just be a complete <laughs> with me. Free pizza Fridays. 
end all forms of slavery. Crazy how we haven't done that yet. Jesus Christ. All politicians are fired out of a cannon into the sun. Start the most aggressive tree planting campaign ever. Switch to green energy. A universal tax for the billionaires. I say universal because they won't be able to declare their gains in a country without taxes. Ban TikTok and similar things in every country. Everyone on earth gets a little treat, like grocery store checkout line, candy or gum type of treat, but a treat for everyone. No wars ever. Talk it out, not shoot it out. No, let them shoot it out, but with Nerf guns. Release all info on aliens, Bigfoot, mermaids, etc. That's your first decree? Your first decree is to release info on cryptozoology and not help people who actually exist? Jesus Christ, man. What is something every junk drawer must have in order to be considered a junk drawer? Scissors and <laughs> clips were the first thing that came to mind. An assortment of keys that nobody knows what they belong to and a flathead screwdriver with a plastic handle. Rubber bands that are so brittle you can see the cracks. USB or power cables and you have no idea what product they originally came with. An item that prevents the drawer from closing after it's opened. And conversely, something that gets stuck so you can't properly open it. Batteries and shoestring come to mind instantly. Scissors. Sharpies that have long since dried out, a random birthday card with no envelope, and for some reason, kitchen twine. Eight different pens that are all dead, but no one throws them away. A couple of decks of cards that may or may not be missing cards. Dried up super glue. Carry out menu from a local Chinese restaurant. Random piece of strange plastic from something, which you're sure that the week after throwing it away, the mothership will become apparent and not work properly without said piece. A box with three birthday candles because you needed a very specific number of them a few months ago. Two colored pencils from a larger, long lost set and which are never used for anything because colored pencils suck. What's the movie that broke you? What's the movie you watched that even though it was so good, it was so sad, you could only watch it once and still feel bad every time you remembered it? Dear Zachary, a letter to a son about his father, 2008. Boy in the striped pajamas. It's a tough one. The Fox and the Hound. Million Dollar Baby. Schindler's List. Green Mile, as well as what dreams may come. I only rewatch it like once every five to ten years. Too hard hitting. Dumbo. Mama being torn away. Mama rocking your baby in her trunk through the crate. Devastating. I heard the new version has a happy ending at least. Frick circuses that use and abuse animals. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Do not watch right after a breakup like I did. Grave of the Fireflies. Never heard of that movie, but it sounds cool. Jojo Rabbit. The scene where he walks into his mom's shoes and then ties them breaks me every goddamn time and I literally can't watch it. Marley and me. What's an animal you want to cuddle with but can't? Red panda all day long. Grizzly bears. They look like they'd give you the best cuddles when in reality they'll tear your face off. A seal. Raccoons. The fawn that gets left outside our door. The mother was left at our house as a fawn and now she will just march the kid up to us while we're standing there and be like, watch the kid, I got deer stuff to do. The fawn will curl up about five feet from me, never touched or fed either of them. Snow leopard. Bear. Shrug. Big floof. Definitely a polar bear. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, you thought I was going to say, oh my? No, I'm not. Human. Oh, buddy. Me too. What scares you the most about today's reality? Rent is insane. Food prices are insane. Wages are insanely, incredibly low and getting lower. People seem kind of hopeless and miserable. Actual real world issues are part of it. And I think the internet and consumer culture magnifies it. A lot of the emerging technology worries me because I see work being automated away, but not the capitalist values underpinning it. We'll make a global society that doesn't need people to function, but nevertheless has more than 8 billion of us. Nobody in authority is being held accountable for obvious and blatant crimes. The fact that every human being has a wealth of information right at their fingertips and many choose to remain absolutely ignorant. How fast people believe a headline without even taking a second to read the first line or any of the article itself. I think to me that is the scariest thing about modern day social media and media outlets. The seemingly inexorable drift toward authoritarianism coupled to the dissolution of democracy. It's consistently 60 degrees in January. We're getting way more powerful than I think we're equipped to deal with. The lack of empathy. It seems to be dwindling away by the day. Who is the best TV character of all time, in your opinion? Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Mr. Fred Rogers. No one said it had to be a fictional character. He was, without a doubt, good. Malcolm Reynolds. Captain Jimmy McGill slash Saul Goodman. Also, a shout out to Mike Ehrmantraut. Spock. Tony Soprano. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> if you could have a song as a security alarm, when someone enters your house, what song do you want the alarm in maximum volume to play. Chop suey. It at least scares the intruder for a second. Wake up! Maybe put on a little makeup! <clears throat> Let the bodies hit the floor. Cops theme song. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Is shot through the heart and you're to blame. Get it because he's gonna shoot the intruder with a gun. <laughs> God 
Red Knight Joe. Hey, good pick, buddy. Eye of the Tiger. Get you pumped for when you're about to defend yourself. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. What is a real life example of this? The introduction of kudzu for erosion control. It has become invasive and girdles and kills plant life above ground without establishing proper roots, therefore causing soil erosion. Trying to rescue too many cats. I worked at a cat shelter for a few years. It always sucked whenever we got an intake from a hoarding situation. It was always at least a dozen cats who had a laundry list of health problems and were practically feral, sheltering your kid from every possible problem. The introduction of non-native species as a means of solving an environmental problem. Lobotomy. Surgery to fix the mentally unwell. It sounds so good. No more reliance on medication. You're good from now on. But it didn't work. The outcomes were awful and it was frequently done without any sort of consent. It all could have been shut down fairly quickly if people were honest about what was happening, but careers and money were at stake, so many unnecessarily suffered. I feel like dynamite is a pretty great example. He literally just made it for mining and was so horrified by people using it on other people, he made the Nobel Peace Prize. Helping someone by enabling them in their self-destructive behaviors. Sometimes you help someone by denying them what they say they want. The r slash am I the asshole comment section. I have saved a baby from a burning building but had to break a window in the process. Am I the asshole? You're the asshole. That's criminal damage because it's not your window, you swine. Get therapy, get a divorce, and a lawyer. The beginning of any political journey, I suspect. What was your it can't be that easy, it was that easy moment in your life? One time I tightened my gas cap and the check engine light went off. Fixing clogged drains. Started out because my sink drain plug wouldn't stay up. Poked around under the sink and found the pop-up rod had rusted completely, through and broken. Cost me $5 for a new one, the plumbing supply store next to where I work at the time. Took five minutes to figure out how to swap, and now I know how sink and shower drains come apart, which makes unclogging them simple. Maybe it's just me, but in my brain, it seemed like that was something I'd have to call a plumber to come unclog, but it's all remarkably simple. Suing someone in small claims. It was surprisingly easy because my case was rock solid and I had a professionally printed document of the evidence, witness statements, and precise records sent over to the court while the defendant did literally nothing but send unlabeled loose printouts of my Facebook page as her so-called evidence. It was very quick judgment for plaintiff. Got a salary request when applying for a job. Accidentally wrote double what I meant to write since the number keys were right next to each other. They accepted it anyway. Edit. Well, that exploded. Just like your salary, brother! Congratulations! Maybe I should start doing that when I said invoices for Ask MK. I'd be like, mm, actually, this number right next to it, <laughs> it may be a little bigger, but uh, maybe it'll work. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I would never do that. Pinky promise. Please don't fire me. <clears throat> Worked on an almost $5 million lighting rig for a concert as a junior guy on the job. We get it all plugged in and patched, but none of it would turn on. All the guys are freaking out trying to figure out why. The team collectively had about 150 years of experience. No one checked to see if the generators were turned on. I was like, no way this is why, but I'll just go check if the generators are good. Flip stuff on and viola. Flip stuff on and viola. It was a classical concert then? Hey, great joke, buddy. Found a 60-inch TV by the dumpster. Plugged it in, didn't turn on. Looked up common problems with the model number. Bought a part on eBay for $20. Replaced part and had a huge TV. Tying shoelaces. When I was a kid, no one ever managed to teach me how to tie my shoes. I remember never being able to get that last step that ties it all together, and in general, I suck with knots. I would have been garbage in the Boy Scouts. I got into early 20s relying mostly on Velcro shoes. But one day, I sat down with a pair of new shoes, determined to figure it out. I put one on and tied it correctly on the first try. I just sat there dumbfounded for a few minutes, wondering how it had been that easy all along. I do not remember the last time I had a pair of tied shoelaces. My work shoes that I have are slip-on. Actually, both of my, 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 my regular shoes are slip-on, my work shoes are slip-on, and I have Crocs. I think the only shoes I have that are tied are like my boots, but I don't wear those. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I tied my shoes. Actually doing the chore you put off for a few days, but I don't want to do my laundry. I never slept well ever. There's an over-the-counter magnesium supplement called Calm. I drink a cup every night and sleep like a hibernating bear. It was that easy. Making my username. Complete opposite experience for me. Oh, those are some good names. That's really funny. What movie do you enjoy that you will 100% agree is a bad movie? The Core. I'm paraphrasing here, but there's a portion of the movie where everyone says it can't be done, but one guy takes a drag on a sig and says, but what if we could? The entire movie progresses on that point. <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. I mostly enjoy that one unexpected scene. Check it out. I saw it at the movies when it came out, one afternoon by myself, then I saw it again with three friends, just so I could watch them during that scene. <laughs> Flash Gordon was released in 1980, but re-released this year in 4K. Bad, but in the best way. And that Queen soundtrack. The core. Terrible movie. Lack of science or logic, but I just find it so gripping. Fool's Gold. It's a dumb movie that makes no sense, but for some reason I go back and watch it at least once a year and enjoy it every time. Gone in 60 seconds. Say what you will. 
but I can watch this every day. Batman and Robin is a certainly bad movie. I love it so much. It's worth watching for Arnold and his puns alone, but the whole movie is just can't be fun. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It's so much fun, and I love the Nautilus. Hackers. Hack the planet. Which black and white movies are absolutely worth watching? Seven Samurai, original 1954 version. Twelve Angry Men, 1957. Double Idemnity. Every Bill Wilder movie. To Kill a Mockingbird. I'd rather just read the book. Doctor Strange Love. Psycho. Arsenic and Old Lace. All About Eve. Some Like It Hot. Roman Holiday and Bringing Up Baby. Sunset Boulevard. Redditors who have worked around death slash burial. What's your best ghost story? I worked with hospice and a long-term care. The spookiest phenomenon was the man in the corner. Happens all the time for people actively dying. They see a shadowy man in the corner of their room. Corpses move when you cremate them. People who don't know this get spooked a lot. I used to work in a nursing home. The residents in certain rooms would complain about a man in their room at night, but hallucinations are common in the elderly, so it wasn't really noticed. One night, I was mopping the dining room, which had huge windows overlooking the garden. It was around 1 a.m., so pitch black outside and low lighting inside. I had this horrible feeling of being watched, so looked up and reflected in the window was a man behind me. He had a brown suit on, bowler hat, and the cruelest look on his face. He grinned, and his mouth was too big. This happened in seconds, and when I turned around, there was obviously no one there, but I'll never forget that look of evil on his face. I paid more attention to the residents after that, and they'd all seen the same man. He just enjoyed terrorizing people. Oh, fuck. Frick, man, I really gotta stop doing these late at night. Oh, that freaks me out. Mom told me stories when I was growing up. Her first job out of nursing school was an RN in the ER of an old hospital in Virginia in the mid-1980s. There was the man in the hat and patient one. Most of the nurses had stories about them. The man in the hat would show up and stand outside of rooms after visiting hours. The patients often died soon after. Patient one was a woman in very old hospital gown. She'd walk in the halls before entering random rooms. Those patients usually coded. They took the man to be an omen of death and the woman to be a heads up to grab the crash car. Actually, very helpful ghosties. When my cousin was 18, he was in a bad wreck and him, his girlfriend, and sister were all pronounced dead at the scene. Police arrived to inform my aunt and his mom, and she asked that he be sent to a specific funeral home. While they were preparing to embalm him, he raised up and asked, where the hell am I? The funeral director said it was the first time he had ever had to go home and change pants. I should add that the top of his head was open and his brain was exposed. He was sent to the hospital. The same police officer came to my aunt to tell her he was not dead, but in the hospital. They thought he'd be in a vegetative state, but a few weeks weeks later, he walked out of the hospital. My aunt said it was the worst and best day of her life. What? No way! How does stuff like that happen, man? That freaks me out. I saw the ghost of a small boy with a yellow and red striped shirt in the back of an old ambulance. I've attended about a thousand or so deaths. I've always felt like I had a sense of when their souls left or were still there. Not paranormal, but my wife grew up in a funeral home. Mom was a funeral director. They had a cat that would wander into viewings, and the relatives would always comment that it was grandma or whoever visiting in cat form. Roommate back in college was an intern at a coroner's office, told me about a heavyset guy that had been brought in that would pass gas loudly every time they moved it. Took the body a couple of days to run out of gas. Don't know if that's normal, but it creeped him out, and I found it to be interesting to hear about. What screams, this person peaked in high school to you? Regularly reposting the same picture of the one notable moment they had in high school. My ex-stepmother constantly bragged about being a cheerleader in high school and winning a beauty walk in a town of like 500 people. She was still bragging about these last time I saw her. She was in her mid-40s. One guy I knew literally got our school emblem and mask in a huge class of 2010 tattooed on his shoulder. Ugh, man. Still acting like a typical mean girl when they're damn near or past 30. Anyone who bullies other adults as if they were still in high school. Still going to every high school football game and sitting in the student section. Under college or university in their Facebook profile, it says School of Hard Knocks. They keep insisting for the next 30 years that they would have taken state if coach would have put him in the game. Almost 10 years after high school, a guy asked me if one of my friends was popular in high school. It doesn't get better once you grow up. I I told a sub teacher at my school that people told me this all the time and she told me the only people that say that are the ones who peaked in high school. I miss her every day. Redditors who have committed a crime and got away with it. What crime did you commit and what's the story? Oh, let me guess. Someone's gonna say, nice try FBI. When I was a kid, I stuffed my pockets with coffee beans from Kroger. When I got home, I asked my cousin if they wanted any and showed them my pockets stuffed with coffee beans and then they looked at me like I was stupid. I grew up in a small town. One night, my best friend and I broke into the fairgrounds and stole a bunch of stuff. Little gnomes, planters, flags, etc. We then put them randomly all over town. It made the small little paper and everyone was perplexed. It was me! I was 10. I took my own mowing money and rented a copy of Mega Man X. I never took it back, ever. The store was open for another few years and eventually shut down. They told me I owed them hundreds of dollars in late fees and I freaking got away with it! I exploited a bug in Domino's Pizza app. They said I can only use one coupon, but once I got to the payment page, there was an option to add coupon. If I tried to input another coupon, it said, cannot redeem more than once. But it did allow one 
coupon that would randomly pop up in ads. I saved it in a notepad and it gave me a 40% discount. Used it like this for about two years. I used the combo two pizzas coupon or free stuff like desserts, garlic bread, and got a 40% discount. Amazon price glitch. Got two monitors for free. First time was an accident. Second time was to test the theory. Didn't want to do it a third time because intentionally it can be a crime. The woods a few miles from my house had a huge mountain of old tires. A friend and I set them on fire, not realizing how quickly it would get out of hand. Before we knew, there was a massive out of control fire burning in the woods. We ran and called 911 and told them we were walking by and saw it. We were featured in the paper the next day as good Samaritans. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Shoplifted porn magazines as a teen. I needed them more than the store owner. I would have paid if I was allowed. Bro is desperate. Whew. When I was about 10, I found this shawl while shopping with my mom and insisted she buy it for me, but she refused, saying it was too expensive. I found a discount sticker on a random item in the store, peeled it off, and put it on the tag for the shawl, then told my mother I found a second one that was cheaper. It worked. The store honored the discount on the sticker, and my mom bought me the shawl. I got home, put it in my drawer, but never wore it. It stayed there for almost a decade until I got rid of it. That's a downer ending. Yeah, if you're gonna steal, at least wear the damn thing. Come on! Stole a Snikers out of a Kmart when I was eight. Got it all the way home. I remember being paranoid about the wrapper before eventually burying it in the flower bed by the front porch. You're not law-abiding when you're hungry. What's something everyone should experience at least once in their life? Contentment and security. Not necessarily full happiness, but satisfaction in your own life and safety within it. Something that a great many of us don't actually have. Being in love with someone who loves you back. A loving and supportive group of humans. I have two. One is seeing a starry night sky, no clouds, no light, no pollution, just a beautiful night sky. Or better yet, the northern lights. Second is seeing the view from a mountain peak. People always talk about how ugly the world is, but I think these two things really remind you of how beautiful the earth is too. The sound of it snowing. I laid on the ground in the snow at night in the Alaskan wilderness in December. It's so peaceful. Reading a book's so good, you can't fall asleep without reading a new chapter and to feel slightly sad when you finish it. Seeing an ocean in person from a beach. The thing some people do of waking up and being excited for the day to come. That sounds nice. What is your NSFW confession? I faked my passing grade for a course paid for by my work. Since they didn't need an official transcript, I gambled on academic privacy and won. I've used a pallet jack as a scooter before. Please don't tell my boss. Your secret's safe with me, buddy. I mute the sound during our all-company meetings and just take a nap in the other room. There was a designated cooler at my work for people to make out and I'd be lookout for the boss and page them so they wouldn't get caught. Yeah, yes, I made money off of it. I often use my rolling chair as a step stool to reach the top shelf. Please don't tell OSHA. I cut a date short because I had to take a massive shirt. Found a ditch and I'll never wear that shirt again. Edit, my highest comment is going to be taking a shirt in a ditch at midnight. Wonderful. I don't do anything at work. Sometimes I see folks who post an NSFW in my area walk past the front desk of the hotel I work at and I struggle to keep a straight face knowing I saw their nudes on Reddit. What's the worst human invention ever made? Landmines. Cheap and easy to make, but they remain active and people forget where they put them. Mustard gas is pretty nasty stuff. Casino slot machines that allow you to insert your credit or debit cards. Remembering the last time a thread like this came up, the correct answer is along the lines of leaded fuel. Ads with a fake X. Planned obsolescence. Social media algorithms. The one evil scientist made a robot that molests kids. I think it was solar powered. Mobile game ads. Who did not deserve to get canceled? The dislike button on YouTube and being able to see the ratio. Robbed us of our key tool to spot misinformation and call out corporate show videos. Alan Turing. Brendan Fraser. Guy got blacklisted for speaking up about being sexually harassed by a studio boss. I'm so happy for the love he finally receives. He's a treasure. Janet Jackson. Galileo. Man got canceled for speaking facts. My Southwest flight over Christmas. 90s Winona Ryder. It took her years to come back. What'd she get canceled for? Shoplifting. It was pretty messed up how we treated Britney Spears back in the 2000s, making her into the butt of jokes for literally having a mental breakdown. We all laughed at the leave Britney alone person, but they were 100% right all along. Finding out years later that her mental breakdown was probably the result of the lack of control she had over her own life under her father's conservatorship made us realize how huge souls we were being back then. Monica Lewinsky, the woman that spilled blazing hot McDonald's coffee on herself and sued. Hey, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.